hello and welcome to my channel if it's your first time please go ahead and subscribe to my channel my name is magali and let me take this opportunity to welcome you to this channel i mean welcome to the family the topic for today is six practical ways or steps that you can do to keep your mind healthy and positive all right so i have a verse and it's in second Corinthians chapter 10 verse 5 we demolish every argument and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. There you have it, guys. This verse, I hope it blesses you. I mean, meditate on this verse. It's such a powerful verse. Uh, it has a lot to say with, it has a lot with what I'm going to say. Um, I do have another verse this one is romans chapter 8 verse 6 it reads the mind governed by the flesh is death but the mind governed by the spirit is life and peace again the mind governed by the flesh is death the mind governed by the spirit is life and and and, and peace so these two verses they are very powerful they are very powerful everything that has to do with the mind remember the mind is a soul the mind is the will um your thoughts your thoughts what we think is exactly what we have what we see what we do um so let me begin with the first one the first practical way to keep your mind and pretty much to just be healthy mentally and to have a positive uh, mind and a positive attitude towards life and towards everything pretty much in general. I would say just the number one is very key. Meditate on the word of God. I mean, meditating on the word of God is very, it's very important. Having a relationship with God is so key we read so much these days we are all ha we all have this we all, ha we all have smartphones i mean we read all kinds of news articles um we watch tv like we are on twitter we're on facebook we're on instagram i mean we're always reading we always so imagine we have all of that time reading we're all we are taking all these informations whether good or bad and eventually those things become our lives. So we are pretty much believing and going exactly how the world is making us. We are going with the world in all this, this different direction. We are meditating on this. Meditation means what? It doesn't mean like you just see. Meditating is taking. Your mind is processing. So we are processing Facebook, we're processing. In, your mind is processing, is, is meditating, meditating on news. Your mind is med meditating on, on Instagram pictures of your favorite celebrities or your favorite, your favorite gossip um, uh, Instagram page. So, and that eventually becomes your reality. Um, you ever realize that most people who watch reality TV shows, they over, all of a sudden start acting like those people. Like love and hip hop, for example. And you start seeing women or men acting the same way they see those women act. So the reason why I'm saying this is that we're meditating on all of these things in the world and yet they're not fulfilling us. The word of God, it is the only book that you read and it's reading you at the same time. It is the only way of life. It is the only book that has wisdom. That is the manual of life. It is the, I believe to me, I think it's, it's, it's the greatest book ever. And, and I think it's a book I believe is the book that everybody should have and read at least. Um, no matter what religion you are. But I think everybody should give this a chance. I give it a try. We read all kinds of books anyway. Reading the word of God won't kill anyone. If you have time to read the news, if you have time to be on social media, you have time for the word of God. You have time to meditate on the word of God. If you can have the energy to do everything, all the things, I mean, if you can have to do time to, you can have time to do everything in this world. I am sure you can have time for God as well, for the word of God. 
you reading book how to be successful hey you can ha you can have time you have time to read that book you have time to read the word of god as well that's number one meditating on the word meditate on the word of god the second is developing a constant prayer habit we we are a generation that wants full-time blessing like full-time blessings but yet we are uh, in a in a part-time relationship with god not even part-time you know we want blessings 24 hours we want success in 24 hours like overnight su success but our prayer life is like this this much so it is in prayers that things happen it is in prayers that mountains are moved it is in prayers that you learn how to be disciplined how to, it is in prayers that god gives you vision that god gives you purpose it is in prayers that god reveals your purpose and reveals your identity it is in prayers that god gives you incredible ideas like new businesses ideas and it is in in prayers that you break generation curses it is in prayers that you're able to break soul ties and get a you, prayer 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 it is in prayers that you are able to break old bad habits that won't take you anywhere so a prayer is praying is just communicating with god having that intimacy with with god having that personal relationship with god and prayer isn't just it, it, prayer is not even a formula prayer is having an honest and authentic conversation with god and just telling god how you feel how you love him how grateful you are you you tell him what's on your heart uh, if you have a need, if you have a want, if you are sick, if you are worried, you go into prayer. We are so quick to go tell people our businesses who won't do nothing and we won't have time, like a five minutes prayer time to tell God everything that we need or whatever that's bothering us. You know, you, you have time to go and tell people about your relationship. So, but you won't have five, even five minutes to tell God like about whatever that's going on. If it's your relationship, if it's about your business. So praying is key the third is have a relationship have a relationship with the holy spirit i mean the holy spirit is real the holy spirit is real and he is present he's a he's he's a, he's he's a spirit but he is as present as i am present as you are present the Holy Spirit is key. I know having a relationship with the Holy Spirit will save you a lot of issues in life. It will, it will make you wiser. It will make you uh, stronger. I started acknowledging the Holy Spirit. You know, the Holy Spirit is just, sometimes you're about to do something. You know, the world calls it intuitions, angst. I used to, you know, I used to be like that too. But I know, man, it's the Holy Spirit. Once you have been, once you're born again, you've been baptized, immediately you receive the Holy Spirit. And it is those times where you're about to do something and you know that thing is not right, but you have this, you have a voice in your heart that is telling you don't, don't, but you do it. And when you do it, things end up being, you know, you start, you end up regretting after. Or you are trying to do something but you have this fear and this is something that is about to change your whole life for the better and you have a voice that is telling you that it's discouraging you and then you have another voice that is pushing you that is encouraging you that is the holy spirit the holy spirit will tell you will reveal things to you the holy spirit will reveal intentions from like people's intentions he will show you he will make you feel things and he will speak to you i mean let's i will this if, I, if we start we begin with the holy spirit i won't finish because the holy spirit is amazing you don't understand he's amazing he's amazing and the fourth yeah so the third was have a relationship with christ and the fourth is be selective with what you hear or see. You want to keep your mind healthy. You want to stay positive. Be selective with what you hear and what you see. Let me tell you why. Because these, the eye and the ears are the gates to the soul. 
There is a verse in Matthew where Jesus was telling somebody that if their eye is filled with darkness, so the soul will be filled with darkness. But if the eye is filled with light, then the whole light, your whole life will be filled with light. I will give you an example. If you are a kind of person that is what always watching, you know, drama that is always watching people dying, killing, you're playing video games where your people are killing each other. So that is already entering into your spirit. And eventually you're going to start having this, uh, you're going to start, um, you will end up having this habit of a angry person, but also what you hear. If all you hear is gossip, if all you hear is drama, if all you hear is argument, if all you hear is just evil things, guess what? There's no way your mind is going to be healthy. There's no way you're going to be positive. Uh, Proverbs chapter 23 verse 7, it says, For as a man think in his heart, so is he. Um, and also, you, you, it doesn't matter. You can fake to, to, to be all positive and all of that. And, but your heart, trust me, it's just, just a matter of time. It's going to show. It is really going to show. Because whatever we say is exactly how we feel in our heart. You know, I'm sorry. I know that somebody might say something. Oh, you know, somebody, someone may insult you and say, oh, no, I was just, I was just kidding. Please. There's no such thing. I was just kidding. There's a reason. There's always, if you have no evil in your heart, then evil won't come out of your mouth. If you have, you are filled with love and kindness and joy. If you are filled with the fruits of the Holy Spirit, it is exactly, that's how it's, that's what's going to come out of you. If you're watching, um, if you're watching like porn, that's an example. And you wonder why you struggle with lust all the time that you can't resist when you see a woman passing by or a, a man and all you think is about sex. You know exactly where you're coming from because what we see eventually takes a place in our mind is like a computer. It's like a, it's like this, it's collecting data. You know, it's, a, it's collecting data. It's like a computer. You know, everything we do on the computer, it stays on the computer. If you go back, even if you go back, I say, and you know, I know people will say, oh, you can click the closing tab and, you know, obviously the tab will go away. But trust me, there's another area on your computer that says history. And that will literally take you back. If you go, if you type history, it's going to show you what you were doing yesterday, the day before. It has the whole, literally it keeps everything. It keeps data of everything. Another, the fifth will be submit your thoughts to the obedience of Christ. I mean, this is in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5. Submit your thoughts. Submit your thoughts. Submit your thoughts. Because I don't care. Somebody says, oh, but I can't help it. I'm just thinking about this so much. Please. You got the power. You got the power to control your mind. You got the power to say, I refuse to, to think this. I refuse to think this way. And call on Jesus and say, Jesus, help me because I cannot think this way. I don't want to think about this. I don't want to think about uh, what happened. Erase all these thoughts. For, like, for example, you've watched my video about su on, you know, on suicide, suicidal thoughts and depression and all of that. All those things, ha they happen because we, are al we allow them. Because we like to be in our feelings. We like to entertain thoughts. So you have the power to, to not entertain evil or wrong thoughts. You have the power to control your thoughts. Because Jesus has given us the authority, guys. He has given us the authority. We have the power with the help of Jesus. Literally, we have the power and the authority to do anything. You have the power to submit your thoughts and say, Jesus, I don't like how I'm thinking right now. And you can talk back to your thoughts and say, I refuse to think this way. It's not about, it's not about might or about power, but by the spirit of the Lord. You say, Holy Spirit, give me your help me. I don't want to think about these thoughts and Cast those thoughts away. And trust me, try this. Use the word of God. It will work for you. I know because it works for me. Trust me. Do it. The sixth is practice 
good thoughts. Practice good thoughts. I know it's like everybody right now, for example, everybody's like, oh, how to think positive, how to do this. And it's like this new age thing that is going on right now and the law of attraction. I mean, they're all, they're all getting from, the, let me tell you, we always forget that the devil once was close to, G, to God in heaven. He knows the Bible more than we know the Bible. All of this is from the Bible. But we don't know. The devil tempted Jesus with scripture. Are you kidding me? When Jesus was in the wilderness, Satan came to tempt him. And let me go actually there to show you how tricky the enemy is. That's why you never submit to any, every, when you have thoughts that are going like crazy in your head, always go to the word of God. Believe me and trust me. That's one thing the devil hates. He's, he's afraid of the, the word of God. Luke chapter 4 verse 9. He says, the devil, led Jesus, the devil led him to Jerusalem and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. If you are the son of God, he said, throw yourself down from here. For it is written, he will command his angels concerning you to guard you carefully. They will lift up in their they will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. Then Jesus replied in verse 12. He replied, It is said, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. I mean, this is a scripture from Psalms 91 that the devil used to tempt Jesus. That's why just because you're thinking something and it seems good, you always got to have, you always have to check with God first. You always have to check with Jesus to make sure that God approves it because the devil is indeed the angel of light. Okay. And he always use thoughts, our thoughts against us. So let me tell you, once you understand this, don't let the enemy to, don't let the enemy literally use what God has given you against you because thoughts are actually good but when used the right way when submitted to Christ thoughts are good but it, because it is the you know how we create things how we come up with these business ideas how we come up with great um, poems and music and all of this it starts first with with the thought and then it becomes uh, an, it becomes a reality you gotta want to be healthy and positive because if you're not your mind is not healthy every area of your life will suffer because it all starts here it all starts here i mean uh, there's i don't know how else i can say remember you have control over your thoughts with jesus we can do all things literally we can do all things through christ who strengthen us that is philippians chapter 4, four verse 13 we can do all things through Christ who strengthen us, okay? So that means when he said all things, he meant, he really meant all things. All things. Anything you put your mind to, he got you. When you're trying to do something and the enemy is trying to bug you with a lot of thoughts that you can't do it, you can't, there's so many reasons why you can't do it. Remember, guys. The word of God affirms us that we can do all things through Christ who strengthen us. And all things are possible. So don't be stuck. Don't allow thoughts of depressions to put you down. Don't allow suicidal thoughts. Don't allow gossip or people talking about you or the enemy using fear. Because fear also is a thought. Okay, so you, gotta, you got to remember that God has given us the authority. He has literally given us the authority. Okay, so that's it, guys. Um, I want to finish with a prayer. Uh, thank you, Lord. Thank you for this beautiful word. Uh, thank you for just being an amazing God. Um, I'm putting my brothers and sisters who are watching this. I am putting them in your hands, Father. We humble ourselves before you. We repent of all our sins, known and unknown, Lord. And Lord, just have mercy on us. And let your grace cover us. Put a hedge of protection over us. And Father, we submit all our thoughts 
to the obedience of Christ. And Father, we want our mind to be guided by your spirit because your spirit has life and peace. And because you're where your spirit is, the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. So I decree and declare that we have liberty. We are free. If there's anyone that is battling with depression or anyone that is just battling with anything that is bothering them, I pray that Father, you release them. I pray that you free them in the name of Jesus. You heal us, all of us, Father. We're in times where things are really hard for us. But Father, we trust you because you are the God of impact possible and we believe we believe that great because your plans the plans you have for us are not of evil but to prosper us to give us a hope to give us hope and a bright future so father we trust you if you be for us who can be against us father i thank you i give you the glory in the name of jesus christ i pray amen all right guys i love you i'll see you next time